Uh, today, I'd like to show you how to uh, use GNSSV data to detect tsunami from the data. Uh, I think uh, some of uh, you are interested in using uh, GNSSV data for uh, tsunami early warning. Uh, but of course, the original data uh, is uh, uh, cannot show you uh, tsunami directly. So you need some processing before uh, uh, the uh, tsunami data uh, is used for early warning. Uh, the, we, uh, uh, my colleagues and I self, myself have developed GNSSV data for more than uh, 25 years. Uh, the, uh, the, the first tsunami was detected by uh, GNSSV uh, in uh, 2001. Uh, that was from the Pearl earthquake. And uh, uh, we uh, sorry, uh, detected the tsunami at the uh, buoy placed uh, at the Ofunato city, which is in the northeastern part of Japan. As you know, this part is very famous, uh, the popular place for uh, the tsunami attacking. And uh, the famous one uh, is, uh, of course, 2011, uh, the Tohokoki tsunami. Uh, but before uh, that uh, large earthquake, we began to uh, install GNSSV data for experiment. And this is a buoy uh, that is used for detecting tsunami at that time. And uh, probably you, all of you are interested in using Michibiki uh, satellite. Uh, and uh, probably you may use uh, Madoka uh, precise uh, orbits and clocks for uh, the analyzing GNSS data on the buoy. However, at this time of 2001, of course, we didn't have uh, such sat uh, good satellite. Uh, we sent the GNSS data, original data, to land to make a so called uh, real time kinematic analysis, which is a baseline mode analysis. And uh, uh, we used a very simple algorithm for uh, making uh, the uh, estimating the coordinates. But anyway, that is not a big uh, uh, the problem issue in this uh, presentation. A anyway, uh, we obtained the original data as shown here at the time of uh, the Pearl earthquake. Uh, I I think if uh, the people you are interested in using GNSS data are already uh, in your hand because we uh, shared our data with uh, the people interested in those data through Kadoya-san. And um, uh, this is the original uh, record. And uh, after uh, removing those, uh, uh, the big amplitude of wind waves, we get the uh, GNSS, uh, the uh, long term change of um, the record, which is shown here. And uh, this is the uh, record after removing those uh, uh, short period waves. And this is uh, data shown uh, from GNSS buoy. And the lower plot is the tide gauge record, which is obtained very close, uh, very nearby of the, tide, uh, the GNSS buoy, which is here. So as you see, uh, the, there is a very uh, small amplitude, but very clear uh, long uh, period of uh, waves, which is tsunami. And the, this is the, uh, the tidal gauge record, which is very similar to that of GNSS buoy. So we can judge that it is tsunami. Uh, this is the, uh, the one tick mark is 20 centimeters. So the amplitude is only about 10 centimeters or less. So we were able to say that uh, several centimeters of tsunami uh, or higher than that can be uh, detected by using GNSS buoy. Then the next slide shows uh, how uh, can we uh, use those uh, records to detect tsunami. Well, first of all, we have to uh, understand what kind of component or what kind of information is included in this original record. 
the there should be uh, three or four uh, components in this original record. The one, first one is a long period uh, wave of astronomical tide. As you see, it's very clear that the sea uh, surface is um, moving very slowly like this. Actually, uh, I forgot to explain that uh, the horizontal, the axis is time and uh, one tick mark is one hour. So we have about 12 or 13 hours of data here. And uh, this is 20 centimeters in amplitude, and this is vertical component. And uh, in this record, the uh, uh, first uh, component is very uh, long uh, period of uh, wave. And uh, this is astronomical tide, as you see. Uh, usually we see in the ocean that uh, the, the sea surface going, uh, going up and down uh, nearly twice a day. Uh, which is due to the attracting force from moon and the sun. And the second uh, component is again the long period, but uh, the period is about uh, 10 minutes to uh, more than one hour, which is a tsunami. But it, it is very rare. So just in, just in the case that tsunami arrives, th this should be included in the uh, vertical component of uh, Genesis V data record. And the third component is very short period wave of wind waves. As you see, this is very remarkable. And uh, of course, there is a calm time uh, where uh, when the amplitude would be 10 centimeter or less, but still this is a very major component. And sometimes when the uh, typhoon or very rough uh, weather comes, then the amplitude of uh, short period wave gets uh, several meters. So we should remove this short period wave to detect tsunami. Now, uh, so we should consider these uh, three major uh, components. And of course, there are some other noises in the record, but we just neglect uh, this noise uh, in, this, uh, in my presentation today. The first one, the, the removal of astronomical tide is sometimes not really necessary, as you see uh, in my first slide, that the tsunami can be seen uh, just on uh, the uh, very uh, slowly moving uh, tidal uh, record. So you can detect uh, the tsunami even if astronomical tide is still on the record. But if you want, really want to remove astronomical, uh, astronomical tide, uh, there may be three ways of doing so. The first one is a theoretical estimation. Uh, the <coughs> tidal force from moon and sun is very well uh, studied and very good uh, uh, the computing uh, software has already uh, obtained and it can be available uh, through this web page. So if you go to this web page, you can even download the software uh, to, uh, to remove the astronomical tide. But this is really a very, uh, very soft, sophisticated program. So, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to use this. But if you can use this, this is very precise and very good way. A little more simpler way is <clears throat> using uh, several days or longer than several days of data and uh, you make a harmonic decomposition because uh, the moon and the sun uh, attraction force have uh, uh, several uh, major uh, duanal or semi duanal components uh, in the data. Uh, duanal means daily, daily or sub daily components in the data. So if you can, uh, if you use the least scale method, you can estimate uh, the amplitude of those major the components of uh, the tide. Then uh, you can just use those, uh, the uh, amplitude uh, estimation to construct the uh, uh, data at any epoch. And so once you can, uh, you do this uh, analysis from the very calm weather uh, or very good day uh, data, 
uh, you can get a very good uh, uh, estimation of the harmonic decomposition so that you can implement uh, those uh, components uh, to reduce the astronomical tide. If you are not uh, uh, familiar with uh, uh, this uh, analysis, you can uh, consult with uh, a geo uh, expert of geodesy or oceanographer uh, for the method. Um, but this requires a, a pretty long data at first to, uh, for estimation of harmonic decomposition. If you have only a short uh, uh, data, such as one day or two days, uh, which is given to you uh, from uh, my own data, because we just cut the data uh, before and after the tsunami record. So you may have only one day of data. In such case, uh, the founding decomposition is very uh, difficult and very uh, less uh, precise. So in such case, you can use a very simple polynomial function as prime function for cup, uh, curve fitting and removing those uh, very slow moving uh, astronomical tide. So this is the first uh, way of uh, uh, removing astronomical tide. Then the uh, mainstream uh, of the processing is how to separate uh, between long and short period waves. Uh, in this case, a long period means uh, 10 minutes to one hour or so uh, showing tsunami. And a short period wave is uh, uh, wind waves. And I made a very simple uh, the plots uh, for the uh, experiment. Here, I show you some of uh, the simulation uh, data in blue color. Uh, suppose that this is recorded data, and this is summation of long wave shown red. In this, this may be thought as uh, the tsunami, and uh, gray color uh, is a short uh, wave, uh, a short period wave. So they, if you su uh, sum up long wave and short wave, you get the uh, uh, <clears throat> the recorded data. Uh, the uh, this uh, very simple uh, the uh, recorded data example. Then the way we uh, the uh, extract long wave data after removing this high frequency uh, wave is simply uh, done by using a moving average method. Of course, there are many other, uh, how to say, the very good uh, mathematical tool of filtering. Of, uh, and if you would like to use those uh, sophisticated uh, method, you can uh, just apply the low pass filtering uh, digital filtering, uh, you can do that. But uh, what we have done so far is using moving average method because it's very, very simple and we can uh, get very good results. And uh, in order to do so, I just show you uh, the exaggeration, the enlargement of this part in the next slide. Uh, this is the first part of the record. And this is the assumed uh, the record, uh, including both uh, long long term tsunami and uh, short term uh, wind waves. So we sh what we should do is to extract only long uh, term uh, movement uh, by reducing the short term movement. In order to do so, we just take the average from the first. Uh, in this case, eight record and just uh, uh, taking the average of for this uh, seven record and divided by eight and getting uh, get the average value now uh what is a little bit uh, uh, uh difficult thing to consider is that uh, the usually the average data should be brought in the center of this data however because this is the axis of time and the average of data can be done only after all of the, these data are obtained. So that only the plotting can be done after uh, getting this uh, last data. So 
uh, you can know uh, the uh, which is shown here in the orange uh, mark, which is estimated long wave data, which is supposed to be plotted at the center of here, but actually the plotting of data is delayed for in this case 3.5 seconds. So uh, the one uh, the merits of you uh, applying uh, moving average method is that the obtained uh, the record is a little bit delayed from the real uh, long wave uh, data. But anyway, in this case, uh, you can average out these short wave uh, waves so you can uh, extract the long term record, which is shown here. So this is the way uh, we apply the moving average method to extracting uh, the tsunami record. So this is pretty simple. Now, one more thing you may want to consider is how to detect or judge that tsunami have arrived from the such uh, the uh, supposed to be tsunami record. Now, I made, uh, uh, again, a very simple uh, the experiment of doing this. Uh, suppose that this is the obtained the uh, long wave record, and it still have some uh, fluctuations. Now, in this uh, simulation uh, data, I added some the exponential uh, the increase of data, uh, the putting uh, assuming that tsunami arrived here. Um, in this case, uh, there are two uh, components you may consider that because tsunami sometimes comes with the uh, uh, rising wave or sometimes it uh, uh, going down waves because uh, the tsunami uh, sometimes uh, shows the uh, receding uh, wave, uh, but and sometimes the tsunami comes for uh, the the upgrading up, uh, upward movement uh, uh, sea surface. So, but uh, you cannot uh, segregate of those tsunamis. So just take the absolute value of those long term the sea waves. Now, the how to judge that the tsunami arrived uh, is done by uh, applying uh, so-called uh, the short-term average and long-term average. The ratio of those uh, can be used for the, take, uh, the judgment of tsunami. The first, you uh, take long data to have a long-term average. And then from here, uh, you uh, estimate a short uh, short term average. And there are two, uh, uh, say, uh, here we assume two types of length. For the long term average, we use 50 data to get a long term average. And then you use short term average uh, using five, only five data, and the short term average using 10 data. And the, there are the factor, the uh, of this length of short-term average changes the results of judgment. The, if the short-term average uh, is, uh, uses only five data, the fluctuation is rather large, and, but the, because the, the average length is very short, it's rather high, uh, easier or earlier to detect that it goes up to the threshold. In this case, I gave two types of uh, ratio, a judgment ratio. Uh, the first one is 1.5 uh, ratio uh, between short-term average and long-term average. And another one is 1.2. So this is a very, uh, how to say, uh, uh, the very uh, crucial or very strict way to uh, judge that tsunami arrives. Then in this case, uh, the short term average uh, 
have the earliest detection in case one. However, then the if the uh, short term average has longer uh, data length, then the detection uh, becomes a little bit late. And another factor of ratio is also a problem. If the the rate ratio is uh, larger, then the detection uh, judgment becomes uh, slower. So the best way uh, in uh, in the how to say uh, classification of judgment is how to judge the arrival time as early as possible. You should use short term average and threshold should be low. Then the detection is earliest. However, in, the, in this case, there is a risk that the false alarms uh, is issued before the real tsunami arrival time because the fluctuation of short term, term average is rather larger than the case of longer short term average. So this is a little bit uh, difficult uh, task of uh, choosing uh, how to, uh, what the length of the short term average and also what the ratio threshold of uh, for the detection of tsunami. And uh, so far, I think uh, there is no one who have ever uh, obtained the best answer for these uh, factors. So what is doing uh, in, the, in Japan, uh, for example, is that the judgment is done uh, in visual mode. Uh, in Japan, the Japan Meteorological Agency is responsible for the judgment of arriving at tsunami. So they are always watching the, uh, the record of uh, sea, surf uh, sea surface. And if they find that the, uh, the change of the sea surface height is larger than uh, for some uh, threshold in visually, then they uh, issue the rat. The, of course, automatic uh, judgment is very important uh, in the uh, actual uh, operation of early warning. Uh, it's still very difficult if it goes uh, to the uh, good result. Uh, the worst case was uh, shown in my uh, previous presentation uh, in which uh, the, the authority issued many uh, false alarms and people uh, finally didn't uh, rely on those false ar uh, those alarms. This is a very bad situation. So it's really important to reach to the very good uh, factors of this uh, uh, judgment uh, method. So uh, this is uh, nearly the all of my, my presentation. And uh, this is a summation, uh, uh, the uh, final comments. The temporal recipe for the tsunami monitoring technique, uh, we should consider uh, four things. The first one is astronomical tide. Uh, you don't have to be so careful about removing astronomical tide, but if you really want to uh, do so, the harmonic color analysis uh, would be the good way for removing astronomical tide. And it was a separation of long period waves from short period waves. A moving average method would be the best uh, way to do so. But of course, you can consider some other uh, uh, modern technique of uh, uh, filtering. The third one is automatic detection of tsunami, which would be very uh, important. But uh, so far, it's really uh, difficult to do so. So the visual monitoring of the long-term wave is a simple way uh, for wave monitor. Now, these are the case of using long, uh, term, uh, longer period waves for uh, tsunami alert system. However, you should consider that there are a wide variety of application in monitoring short periods of sea waves. The short period of sea waves is uh, very important for daily lives, such as uh, fisheries, uh, surfing, swimming, and those uh, 
the vacation uh, needs. So uh, I really want uh, for those uh, who, uh, people who want to use uh, the, the GNSSV data, you should consider that not only for tsunami, but also for other application of the uh, uh, the GNSS data for variety of applications. Right, this is end of my presentation. Thank you very much.